In 1965, both the U.S. and Soviet manned space programs were fighting to become the first to land a man on the moon. At that point, the Soviet Union led the race, but the Russians felt the U.S. nipping at their heels. To hold on to their lead, the Soviets were determined to be the first to prove a man could leave the space capsule and walk in space. It seemed simple enough. All they had to do was get a man to step out of a safe pressurized capsule without having his blood boil off into the vacuum of space and get him back in again. Well, anyway, the important part was that they'd be the first to do it. In order to prevent depressurizing the entire capsule, the Soviet designers created a critical airlock, a small isolated area with an inner and outer hatch that would allow controlled depressurization instead of suddenly sucking all the air out of the cabin. But to stop the airlock from using up too much space in the tiny capsule, they made it inflatable. Next, to protect the cosmonaut when he went out the door, they created a tough, flexible spacesuit, actually more like a human-shaped balloon, which would hold a high-pressure artificial atmosphere around his body. On March 18, 1965, Alexei Leonov and Pavel Belyayev rode their Voskhod 2 spaceship into orbit. Approximately an hour later, while Pavel piloted the craft, Leonov inflated the airlock, crawled in wearing his spacesuit balloon, sealed the inner opening, then opened the outer hatch, and finally stepped out into space. The young cosmonaut spent 12 monumental minutes making history as he floated outside his ship, anchored only by a five-foot tether. During those 12 minutes, however, Leonov's flexible suit expanded due to the lack of external pressure, much like a balloon does as it rises into the atmosphere. Upon his return to the ship, he discovered he could no longer fit through the hatch. No amount of squeezing and pulling and squishing had any positive effect on his predicament in fact, if he wasn't careful, he could rupture his suit. He was trapped outside. Trying a different approach, he cautiously opened a valve on his balloon and began bleeding air a little at a time. After 10 anxious minutes, he still wasn't able to jam all the way through into the airlock. Finally, desperate, he recklessly bled air and, feet first, thrashed his way into the airlock, mashed himself into a ball, and sealed the outer door. Now out of air, he managed to unseal the inner airlock door and rip open his spacesuit enough to breathe again. Unfortunately, Leonov's problems didn't end there. Notorious for technical glitches, the Soviet automatic guidance control malfunctioned on re-entry, so Pavel had to land the ship manually. He brought the capsule down safely, but deep in a snowbank in the Ural Mountain Wilderness, over a thousand kilometers off course. They were forced to spend the night where they were, since the rescue crews couldn't reach them. Eventually, they had to ski and hike down to where helicopters could retrieve them. The two cosmonauts finally returned to the Soviet Cosmodrome some 48 hours after landing, having spent more time in the wilderness than they had in their entire historic mission.